welcome. We're so glad you're here with us today. My name is Devonna Wicks and I'm from Campfire with the Child Care Network. Uh, today we're going to talk about planning for summer and what we can do for our children. <laughs> All right, so have you ever felt like this? Finding a quality summer care, it's no day at the beach. What are we going to do? What are we going to do with our kids to keep them happy and active? So today we're going to talk about finding choices in your area to keep your kids safe and engaged over the summer. <clears throat> summer is here. What are you going to do with your kids? You want them to not become couch potatoes, to stay indoors all day. You want them to have opportunities that are going to keep them happy, safe, and keep their brains engaged. <clears throat> But you want to make sure that you can keep them happy without help making them feel imprisoned. Uh, this is actually a picture of my kiddos uh, when we were uh, visiting their grandmother in California. What can we do? Many times our kids feel like you know they're ready to break out. They want to explore and have fun. Well, our local uh, museums and schools and universities have lots of summer opportunities for the kids. Those are a great resource uh, that you want to look into. <clears throat> so what choices are available? Of course, there's always child care centers for infant through 12 years, uh, day camps, residential camps, math camps, science camps, local college summer programs, uh, city summer programs, church programs. Their list goes on and on. Uh, Campfire wants to be that support and resource and referral for you. So all you have to do is contact us and we'll be happy to help you with your needs and supporting you and finding that program that's going to best fit your child's needs. <clears throat> but when you're looking for that place that's going to be just right for your kids, besides academically or activity-wise, what are the things that you want to look for for quality choices for a program that's healthy yet fun learning? So what are those quality indicators? We're going to talk about that. Number one, you want to um, have quality programs that, that support the key indicators so that you can recognize. So the more information you have, the more savvy you can be as you're looking at the different programs to really recognize, is this the best program for my child, is this really a quality program? First of all is always a positive and happy learning environment. Research has shown that when children are in nurturing, positive, happy environments, they develop better, their brain activity is able to do more, they are more comfortable and so they're able to thrive better. And so we want to find places that really focus on supporting the children's social emotional needs and helping them to thrive. Next, you want to make sure that you have lots of hands-on activities. Hands-on activities make sure that we're really focused on what is going to keep that child engaged, keep them busy, keep them um, out of trouble, and really helping to stimulate um, their cognitive abilities. So first we had um, the positive environment, hands-on experience, and now we're looking at a variety of choices. Is the program focused on child choice? Is there a possibilities for the children to have choices in what they do during the day? Do they get to, you can do choose this or this, uh, you can have this variety of things to do, or is it very single focused? Um, in environments where the child feels they don't have a lot of choices, you'll see more of that pushback and a lot more of the resistance will happen. Whereas if they feel they have positive choices, then it will be a more positive environment for them. Next, you want to make sure there's a varied uh, developmental activities. What type of activities are happening that meets all the different age groups and gives them a variety of different and new experiences for them to, to experience? Here's another fun one, just um, with, with um, stackable, um, recycled uh, fruit cups. 
So we're looking at hands-on experiences, a variety of choices. Next, we want to look for staff that are properly trained. Depending on the program, if there is a pool or they're near water, you want to make sure there are first aid um, and CPR certified, um, that they have lifeguards on staff, that they're, they have uh, the type of education that's really going to help. So well-trained early educational staff um, that really can support the child's needs and the child's level of understanding. Also, you want to make sure that there are low child to staff ratios. If you get into an environment where there's just a large group of children to one or just a few adults, that's where the accidents happen. That's where more incidents happen with the children. Unsafe things can happen. Um, child bullying can be more prevalent there. So whenever you have larger groups of children, Usually, um, you want to be really cognizant of, well, how are the, the teachers, how are the providers really making sure that the children are safe and that positive things are happening if it's a large group. So when we're looking at this again, we're looking for um, our child care or day camps or captivity, that positive environment, hands-on experience, variety of choices, well-trained staff, and the next indicator that you want to look for is parent engagement. How open are they to letting the parents be partners with their children during this time? Is it an open policy? Do they tell you, okay, uh, just drop your child at the door. We, we don't want any interference. You know, that's a big red flag. You want to make sure that it feels very comfortable for you to come and go, that you are allowed to come and visit your child during the day, you are able to check out what's going on with their schedule, what activities are going on, who is there in charge of them and at what times, and how, how the whole day goes through. So you want to make sure that they really see you as a partner in this whole um, time with, with your child. Do they also offer opportunities for the parents to volunteer or to um, support in any other ways? So when we're looking at early child care, the positive environment, the hands-on experiences, the variety of choices, a well-trained staff, that parent engagement, and then last but not least is that outdoor experience. You know, children really need that outdoor experience. And more and more these days, our children are being kept indoors and have very limited outdoor experiences, especially if you live in the city. So you want to look at opportunities where your children really can have those outdoor experiences. You know, can, can they have an experience where they can do um, um, <clears throat> canoeing or swimming or rock wall climbing or, or um, any of these activities that may not be readily available in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid it's going to like suddenly go three at a time. There we go. Here's some more fun outdoor pictures at um, one of our, uh, at our camp at El Tesoro. They have a chance to do archery or um, horsemanship. How many opportunities can you provide for your children to be able to have experience with, with horses or outdoors or other nature activities? All right, so recapping, we want that positive environment, the hands-on experience, variety of choices, well-trained staff, our parent engagement, outdoor experiences, and limited screen time. So, do you ever feel this? <laughs> and the older your child gets, and we're actually seeing um, with the genders, the boys are more susceptible to this than the girls to become addicted to video games. We really want to limit screen time for our children. Um, 
The American Pediatric Association has recommended no screen time, that's no TV, no iPads, no computer time for children under two. And the reason why is that's a very formative uh, brain development time. And then for our preschoolers, no more than 30 minutes a day, which can easily um, be, um, be um, it vamped up if your child care is letting them watch TV or you know grandma's at night or letting them watch TV you know the screen time can easily bloom into a lot of screen time for our young elementary school children um, they recommend no more than an hour to an hour and a half a day, um, at, in, at a time or in one day uh, for our older children as well because that is just time that they're really not being as productive as they can with their brain. You know, if we ever heard of the phrase, you know, I'm vegging out in front of the TV, <laughs> you know, you're just, literally your brain goes into a more passive mode when you're watching TV. Whereas the ch if the child was using that same half hour or hour outside, um, playing with toys, riding their bikes, um, doing some type of activity, their brain would stay in a more um, active, um, mode for that and so we want to do everything we can to keep our children engaged and, and in a healthy place also um, with the uh, um, this is Obama's study with the child obesity they have linked um, extended screen time to child obesity and so we really want to help our children make those positive choices for themselves to um, later on in life so we can help our children at a very young age because the older that they get, if they've had overexposure to screen time at a very young age, it can make it a lot easier for them um, to get addicted to video games. Um, I actually had a personal experience with this. Um, I am a host parent to Chinese foreign exchange students and one of, um, one of my um, Chinese foreign exchange students his best friend at the same school who was um, staying in another host family, he was addicted to video games. As a sophomore in high school, he just couldn't stop playing his video games on his smartphone or on the iPad at school, at home. Um, it was just constant. And even when he was brought in and put on suspension and told him you're going to be expelled if you don't stop this, it's like he couldn't stop himself. The very next day after they got him together with you know, the Chinese agency people, the school uh, officials and the teachers and told him, listen, you cannot play your video games in class again. The very next day they caught him doing it. And so what we want to do is help our children at a very young age be able to make these better choices so they don't find themselves in a place where they're really hurting their future because they're addicted um, to, to video games. <clears throat> All right, and so at Campfire, we really want to support you in what your search is for your children's needs. Um, each search is individually processed for you. When you contact Campfire, let us know what your specific needs are, what ages your children, what you're looking for, and um, we can put together for you um, a profile that will help you best to find something that will meet your needs. Um, when, with your profile, um, we, it includes the name and address and contact information, the rates of that, because we know money is a factor, um, how many vacancies, if the, is this something you want to jump on right away to make sure your child has that spot, uh, the registration options including tours and initial fees, information on meals and snacks, are you um, required to provide the meals, is it provided by the program? What type of um, security information do they have? Do they have coded entries where it's locked entries? No one can get in or out unless they have the codes or permission. Are there cameras or videos on campus so that the safety of your child is, is ensured? What type of program types are there? What curriculum used, if applicable? What the education of the staff is, so you can make sure you know what type of, of training or education they have for the, the welfare of your child. If they're accredited, 
uh, the program location by closest intersection. You tell us where you want it. We'll, we'll, we'll do that search in the area you want. Um, how long it's been in operation. Is this a brand new program that's still working on all the kinks of getting their program together? Or they've been operating successfully for many years. And then are there subsidies offered? And um, many of the programs that we work with, because you are a partner with Campfire, offers a discount um, to the students and to the parents here. So let us know. We'll be happy to um, support you um, in finding the best fit for your child. Again, thank you so much for joining us um, at, uh, with our Campfire Lunch and Learn. Please submit your electronic request form from the Campfire website, or you can make a phone call and we'll be able to help you, or you can email us. So either way, we want to be there um, to support you with your, your child's needs. Thank you so much.